Okay, so I got a PM from a viewer who said he was a new subscriber to you and he just found you last month on YouTube. So okay. can we get like a, a clap for that guy? Good job, good job, good job. So basically what he was saying is he hasn't touched PvP since 2008 when he lost a full Mystic set. Okay. After binging a handful of your videos, he started digging in and his priorities soon shifted to PvP. I see, okay. He proposed to me a few ideas, but Talk firstly me. he mentioned what made learning PvP hard. There's great PvP content, but even then, he imagines just watching highlight reels doesn't give people direction of how to PvP. Okay. Do you understand what he's saying? I understand what he's saying. Long story short, what he would love is a series called From Skiller to Killer, where Oda teaches a skiller who's bad at PvM or PvP, or you just do a guide and show exactly how to dominate high-risk PKing. Hmm. I see. No, like an in depth, like yours is the go to guide of how to PvP. Mm. Skella to killer. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Make sure you like the video, comment, think them below, and make sure you subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. The way he's trying to learn, he said he's going into the rev caves and purposely trying to be attacked by PKers. And what does he gain off that? What is he trying he to do? He wants to learn, yeah, learn how to tank, how to freeze and log, and just basically escape the fight first. So if he ever has to, he has it fine. He knows exactly how to. A lot of new PKers that go PKing. Let's say you guys are a low prayer, and then you guys have 30 HP and you have two prayer. I'm sick of seeing new PKers, so I can be respectful, spamming their prayer potion, pot blocking themselves, and they can't eat after and they die to a 30. And oh, for the people who don't know what a pot block is, what is that? I'm gonna show you, okay? I'm gonna show you. Pot block is this. Let's say you brew, but you don't angler. Now I can't click angler for like a couple of ticks. Does that make sense? And it gives them opportunity to KO you. You wanna angler brew. See how it processed right away? Look again, angler brew. Angler Blue, see how it processes on the same tick? This world's laggy, so it's not processing in the exact same tick, but you know what I mean. So you want to Angler Brew, not Brew Angler. So Angler Brew, process same tick. So look what happens when I do Brew Angler. The Angler doesn't process, but the Brew does. That's called a pot block, which means you only heal 16 HP from that one Brew dose, and then you're stuck there. Same thing with every single pot. That's what I meant by like, don't pray your pot, because then you're going to put yourself at an angle that you can't use Anglers after. The only thing you could do if you're ever pop blocked is eat a Karam one, okay? Let's say you do make that mistake. Look, pop block, the only thing you can do is eat a Karam one right after. You can't eat an angler though. Does that make sense? Pop blocked is a, is a scenario that you do not want to be in. It puts you at a disadvantage and a chance of death. If your HP is low, there's death and you get smited, right? I understand that. I understand where you're coming from. You don't want to get smited. You don't want to lose your OGS, your 9 mil item. You're only risking like 500k. It's okay. That's what's happening in your mind, okay? I understand. Even if you get smited, who cares? Because if, if you eat right, you're never going to die. Does that make sense? So like a lot of people in my Twitch chat, even a lot of noobs in my stream, right? Um, When I get smited on stream, people are like, lol, smited, lol, Oda just got... Who cares? As long as you're eating well, take your time to put that prayer back up. For instance, let's say uh, somebody just smited me, okay? And I have 40 HP right i could understand maybe you're risking 50k and then your ko weapon is d claws and you want to make sure you keep it i could understand you drinking a super restore there and dying for 50k but let's say you risk like a couple of mil and you don't want to get smited don't risk don't don't use your prayer pot triple e double e anything you know what i'm saying so let's say you double eat there. Nice. You're back to 80 HP. He has no spec, no KO potential. But if you restore or pray your pot at 30 HP, you're pot blocking yourself and leading yourself to death for no reason. Don't panic when you get smited. Why do you think I tell you guys to keep high HP in deep wilderness when you only have brews? Because you're always just potting. You don't have anglers or Karam ones. So you just want to keep your HP up at all times because if they do immense damage and if it's crazy damage, you won't be able to catch up, right? So basically, the correct triple E that you would do, you wouldn't bring a triple E to Deep Wilderness, by the way. You'd bring this for Brid, you'd bring this for Venge fights, you'd bring this, bring this for Venge fights, you'd bring this for Pure fights at GE, you'd bring this for Bounty Hunter, but you wouldn't do this in Deep Wilderness when you're at right? So a triple E is like that. 
right? England Brew Quran. I'll show you guys one more time. England Brew Quran, right there, right? But you wouldn't do Brew Angler, okay? Angler Brew Karam, so Angler heals 22, a Brew heals 16, which is 38, and then a Karam heals 18, which is 56. So each triple E heals you 56. That's in one tick. So you're healing 56 damage in basically one tick. Does that make sense? So a Guthix rest in pizza. So a, pi a, a, a pineapple pizza, or people use summer pies these days, or anchovy pizzas, whatever it is. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it heals 11 or 9, okay? Let me make sure just in case, because it's been a while since I risk fought. So it healed me 11. So let's say you're at 72 HP and you're in a DH fight and you don't want to save, but you know he has OGS. Yes. You just pizza at 82. And by the way, you could still angle Brew Karam right after. So it's like a quadruple if you think about it, but there's only like one tick delayed in it. So look at this real quick. I'm going to show you guys something. So let's say you, you pizza at 82 and then he decides to go to spec after triple E. Very simple. As for Guth Express, it's the same concept. But people use this for like a pot trick whenever they... A pot trick is when somebody pots, but then they try to KO you at the same time because the pot disguises the KO weapon, okay? And it also heals 5 HP, so it has the same concept as the pineapple pizza. And the Guth Express does not waste any ticks. So I'm going to get in depth with prayers. So protect item, that's uh, for everybody that's new to PvP. That's in, that's even if you're Skulled, you get to keep one extra item if you die. So you like, let's say that you don't want to risk your KO weapon, but you want to bring a strength enemy, other things, but you have an AGS, you can protect item that AGS as long as you don't get smited. Protect items on death is right here. So items that are kept, AGS, and then I have my untradeable. Obviously, that's, that's an untradeable, so it automatically drops to myself. If you're making a peer, most peers have smite or at least 31 prayer and if you're doing melee you want to use ultimate strength obviously and maybe even steel skin um if you're using range to melee and melee is your kill weapon don't even switch to hawkeye to this yet that's advanced there's no point in using it and you want to use brain if you have that as well and smite okay make sure you're just keeping your prayer up high a lot of advanced peers will use eagle eye and then whatever that is spec they use ultimate strength or they just click quick prayers. People can set up quick prayers and quick prayers is something where you could click on it. So basically they go, let's say I have Eagle Eye on here and then I'm about to spec quick prayers. You know what I'm saying? And then I have all those prayers on. You understand? I've seen a lot of peers do that as well. If you're if you're NHing as a peer, as in Deep Wilderness, people try to get extra odds by using Mystique Might. And then when they're bad at range, they use Eagle Eye. And then when, when they're bad at use melee, they use Ultimate Strength, right? This is all advanced things that I'll teach you guys in the future. But for now, you just need to know the basic prayers on what to do. Whatever is your main weapon that you're using, you want to use that prayer for it, right? So obviously, if I'm using melee, ultimate strength. If I'm range only, eagle eye. If I'm mage only, mystique might, okay? As for mains, med levels, zerkers. Zerkers, I believe they're 52 prayer or 31 prayer as well most of the time. So they would use these as well, okay? But as for med levels and, and then mains... You would want to use these prayers right here, right? Most people in 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 main, when you're risking like about a mil, they they smite most of the time. But if you're if you're risking a couple of mil, they barely smite. But yeah, smiting is a thing. So these would be your prayers, right? You don't even have to use this. You don't even have to use these. These are not important, but they give you I guess slight odds. So just use them for the hell of it, right? Okay. So a smiting does. Um, so it's one fourth of damage dealt is also removed from the opponent's prayer. It, it attacks your prayer so let's say i hit a 50 one fourth of that damage is going to attacking your prayer as well and uh obviously your hp and what would be the benefit of that if someone died with no prayer um you could smite their plus one and which means whoever has protect item on and you smite their prayer and they have zero prayer on you could get their item that they were trying to keep i explained this earlier how you would want to get overheads right it blocks 40 percent of all attacks from melee Protect from range blocks 40% attacks from all range. Protect from mage blocks 40% attacks of all mage. So th this would help you deeply when you're trying to escape at a PKer, when you're trying to fight a PKer in an H, and when you're fighting somebody deep wilderness, you want to like make sure you get every single prayer right. So for instance, I told I mentioned earlier that I would not lose this untradeable. It's because it says parenthesis I, parenthesis. What that means is there's something called a trover in parchment in game. It's this thing right here. Okay. So you could protect all untradeables with this. Uh, defenders, capes, 
the Avis accumulator that you get from Vorkath, the upgraded one. All Void pieces, Void pieces, Inferno, basically all untradeables, right? So you'd use this Atrovan parchment. It would cost 500 gold for you to keep it, and you have to buy one of these from GE. Or you could save enough points in LMS and get them from LMS as well. I believe it's 15 points. So I would go to Purdue, right? He's in all PvP worlds, Lumbee, Edge, Kami. Um, or you could just go in a non-PvP world, go up this general store bank in Edgeville. He's going to ask for 500k, and then you lock the item. Now I can bring this Infernal Cape in Deep Wilderness, and even if I die, I won't lose it. So after, you know, you trover in Parchment, your capes, your untradeables, and if you plan on going to Deep Wilderness, you only need it if you're going above 20 Wilderness, right? So if you're going under that, don't worry, you won't lose it regardless. But if you're going over 20, then you would want to, you know lock your items because you don't want to get your void back your defenders back or your cape back right pvp worlds you don't lose any untradeables um then again uh if you go to deep wilderness on a pvp world you will lose your untradeables or above 20 wilderness but in pvp worlds as in ge edge wherever the ruck you're fighting you won't lose your untradeables so you could go in a pvp world fight somebody die and still have your untradeables in your inventory you're just gonna have to go to purdue after the same guy that you did the lock item and then fix it right for like 50 or 100k um i believe inferno is like 100k and eventic defenders one mil so that's expensive dragon defenders only like 60k and torso is only like 40k void pieces i believe are like 50k a pop so they're very cheap i'm gonna explain to you guys how to escape a pker whether you're a pvmer and whether you're a PK or trying to escape a max guy or whatever it is, okay? I'm about to explain it to you. Let's say that you only have two brews, two restores, and uh, you want to escape, and that's all you have, okay? You have a glory for a teleport, but you're TB. Let me teach you something. So, for instance, right? Um, let's say I'm attacking uh, this gentleman right here, okay? So, I'm attacking this brother... So let's say you're fighting him and then you realize, oh wow, I'm almost out of food, this is bad, okay? I'm gonna mage this guy, right? Mage, I'm gonna try to go for a mage hit. So I caught the mage as he caught it, right? But notice how I'm not panicking. Look, I only have two brews, but I'm not gonna panic, right? Because what did I tell you guys? Drink a brew sip, bolt. Drink a brew sip, bolt. Drink a brew sip, bolt. But notice how I put my HS staff on because it gives me defense bonus as well. That's a little bit advanced, you guys don't have to learn that now, but just keep your bolt on, okay? So, uh... I'm gonna go for a bolt here. I think I could kill this guy, so I'm gonna go for it because I'm ambitious. So I'm gonna go for an OGS here. A one on 60. It's kind of unfortunate. But see, I'm just gonna freeze him, right? He's frozen. And then I would hide behind anything. A tree, a rock, and then I would just log out after a few seconds. And I would get the log out off, okay? It's very simple. Very easy. I'm gonna stay, though, because honestly, this guy is bad. Let's see, let's see what happens. So, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this, right? This is like a as if like if you guys are fighting, obviously, no offense, you guys are not gonna be as good, right? But notice what I do, right? So I'm gonna I'm utilizing this tree now. Remember when I told you about utilizing a rock, a tree, or if you want to log out here, I can log out. I can wait 10 seconds and you wouldn't be able to attack me because you know the barog timer, okay? But unpredictability. So, like, notice how I go for an Ogia smack here. If I hit, I would have went for a G Mole. He's unfrozen now, and notice I have my tank gear, okay? So even if I miss, look, look, I put my tank gear on, right? And then I hit, and then put my tank gear on. Okay, so let's say you get overheads wrong. Okay, chat? You always want to leave your tank gear on. Because your tank gear is everything. It's like your, your backup support. So I started this, this fight off with like two brews, okay? So let, let, let's see how it goes. So like I'm at a disadvantage, obviously. So I can log off here as well, okay? So I can log off here and I'd escape if I wanted to. But I'm not going to, okay? Because I feel like I'm better than this guy, even with the low amount of food that I have. A 0 on 57, unfortunate. This guy is not keeping his HP up, and that's a bad thing. Like I said, chat, you're not supposed to be doing that, okay? He's obviously panicking. I believe he just ice burst me. That is not normal. Okay, now we're going to just go for a Baraga. Flick my tank gear on, right? Look how my tank gear. I'm going to use Protect Mage. Baraga, flick my tank gear on. Usually you would have better tank gear like uh, Varox, Torags, Barrows, Rune, anything, okay? But in this scenario, my tank gear is Black Dehyde. See, if you're ever low HP, you want to camp Protect Melee as well. Notice that I'm camping Protect Melee 
while, while he's close to me because I don't want to get KO'd, right? So now I have no food, okay? What would you do? You would freeze him, and then you would hide behind something, whether it's a rock, tree, a wall, and then you would just log off here and you're home free, no matter what wilderness you're on, right? And there's a bunch of trees in the wilderness. Don't be like, oh, I can't find anything. Well, guess what? This guy's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. Later, brother, you did well, but I did better. You know what I'm saying? So like, I started off with two boosts, two restores. Notice how I outplayed this guy with just having about maybe 140 of HP of food inside my inventory. Do you understand me? I'm gonna fight without F keys to make it fair. Okay, yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's fair. So, like, F keys are Oda. Like, I need F keys. So, when the viewer came up to you and was saying that I'm not a good PvPer, what should I do if somebody attacks me at the revs and I want to escape? So, uh, look at this guy, for instance, right? I have no F keys here, so you guys can't even say that I'm going hard, right? You want to use overhead. You never want to smite unless he's sculled with, like, a fucking Tebow. Then maybe I could see why you would be smiting, right? Um, you're gonna want to pot up, obviously, right? Notice that I'm not using any F keys, so my switches are not gonna be the greatest. But let's say, for instance, you're this guy or you're the PKer. You're gonna obviously want to freeze him as soon as he's unfrozen, and uh, you're gonna be wanting to do as much damage as possible. If he can't protect range, what are you gonna do? Just keep using mage at that point. So I'm gonna switch to protect range on his own. There it is. Fake you the range, and then go back to the Baraga here. Fake the range and then go back to the Baraga here. Now, so, so oh, to start off, can I ask a quick question? Ask me a question. What would you prioritize in this, in this situation? Say you, he was the one who attacked you. Would you try and get every overhead right? Is that the main priority? So if I was this guy, the Grace of Max guy, the Misty guy like this attacked me, and obviously I feel like I'm good enough to fight back. But in your situation, you don't want you want you don't want to do that. So if you're just like a simple rever trying to get some loot and get out of there, what you're going to do is you're going to focus on overheads, correct? And you're always going to have tank gear on. I don't want to see you in robes. I don't want to see you in bad defense bonuses. You can tell what is what you need to be wearing, obviously, right? So this guy just has to focus on getting every overhead right, and he should be fine. And by the way, it, usually, most of the time, a PKer has what, Dami? Let's see if you get this right. He has a KO weapon. A KO weapon. And what is usually that KO weapon based on? It's gonna be melee. melee so if you just even can't protect melee like let's say you're using a few overheads even guess what you want to put protect melee on right they won't possibly they won't ko you it's, it's most likely that they won't even have a chance to ko you because you're just camping protect melee and they wouldn't have an opportunity to actually kill you some kinds people are going to attack you in ancestral and reem crazy ass gear where you have to to get the overheads right so you don't get dealed so much crazy ass damage you understand if someone's doing a lot of dps to you at one time mm -hmm. how how would you eat to the max potential like how how many brews so, how many angler so first you want to catch a freeze usually so like this guy he's fighting back right um which is fine right you want to keep your hp always high okay even this guy he's anti pking and using vengeance ogs after his bow hits he will never kill me because i'm the greatest but let's go for a spec here you know what I'm saying? So like without F keys, I just killed that guy, right? I just, I just destroyed him, but you got to realize his mistake was there that he was fighting back and he was choosing death against somebody like Oda Block. You understand? He's choosing death because he's not prioritizing protection from melee. When did he ever use protect melee that fight? You understand? And yes, I never showed my KO weapon. And yes, I was letting him bite out a lot of bolts and mage hits. But usually every PKer's KO weapon is going to be melee based. And that guy died. I didn't even use F keys. So I'm trying to compare my skill level to you guys. So you can't say step one, be Oda. No, like that's cat. You don't even have to be me. You understand? On the P let, me, let me explain the PKer side of this and the PVMer side of this. So the PKer side, let's say you're just a noob trying to get some farm some GP and you want to make some profit PKing. So you want to, I, I wouldn't recommend, right? If you're a new PKer, to fight other PKers in the Rev Caves because they're usually advanced. Maybe pick on some PVMers, you know, craft your skill up a little bit. You understand? But even then, some it's PVMers it's fight it's back it's like it's the one I just fought right now that had Venge. And most likely he would try to OGS, he would try to Venge my OGS and then spec me himself. But his mistake there was uh, not only not eating after the spec, but also not using Protect Melee on my OGS spec. So, oh, when you're saying he's, he's Venging the AGS, what is, what is that going to do for him? Is that his kill potential or is so that just... So the only kill potential that guy had against me is because I knew he didn't have mage because he was using Venge and I saw that with my own eyes. The only kill potential he has is Venge. And Venge does what? So let's say I spec a guy of 50, right? 
The Venge is going to hit me back. How much damage is it? I don't want to lie to you guys. And 75%. 75% damage back gets towards to you. So it, even when you fight somebody like that, maybe you, you never want to spec on their Venge. I don't care if you're 115 HP. Don't do it, right? You always want to, like, even if he's camping Protect Mage, Mage him. Break that Venge and then try to KO him. You understand? You never ever want to spec a Venge because let's say you spec a 60 and 75% goes back to you. You're going to get hit at a 40 and if he has recoil on, that's plus 7, 47. And then maybe he specs you or hits like a 40 bolt. You could possibly be led to death there. Also, when you're a PVMer and you're trying to tank, right? I don't mean to be toxic. Chat, don't laugh for what I'm about to say. But you guys got to stop being some used napkins. What I mean by that is you got to stop panicking. You got to stop sweating like Mo after going up the steps. You have to realize that, hey, this is a video game. Yes, I don't want to lose my GP, but let me calm down. And realize that you, you could get a lot of overheads right, right? Let's say you put your black D height on, or let's say you're running away from a PKer, right? Relax. There's always an algorithm. Yes, I said it, Dami. You probably don't even know about this. But there's always, every PKer is readable, right? Maybe it's just for me because I'm so used to like experiencing PKing. But West Ham, Pure Spam, Spark Mech, all these guys, they all have a different style, whether you believe it or not. Let me explain why. Certain PKers love to mage way more than range because they find it unpredictable. Other PKers love to range more than they love to mage and it's unpredictable and they get a bit, bunch of bolts off, right? Other PKers utilize Ogia Smacks at NH fights. And an H fight is like Britting, so like barraging, bolting, meleeing. Other PKers love to use melee only, rage only, mage only, whatever it is, but they love to be unpredictable. Each PKer can be readable. I don't care how fast their switches are, but just start predicting. Let's say you have protect range on, he's most likely going to mage you next. So start guessing, protect mage, right? Make sure you leave your tank gear on, because let's say you get an overhead wrong, that tank gear is there to support you. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? So... Your overheads are that extra shield. But let's say you get it wrong, you still have a tank. Like even Black the Hide with a shield and a staff is good. Honestly. Obviously not against max gear, but it will actually help just slightly. Okay? So you want to start guessing. And let's say somebody bolts you. Let, let's talk about food here, right? Let's say that you're somehow getting all overheads right. Usually what a good PKer does, right? Let's say you get hit off back to back 40 bolt and you have 20 HP. In this scenario, you want to put either Piety on, Augury on, or in Protect Melee. And you always have, you always want to have, yes, you want to have like a lot of booze, right? Because you're going in deep wilderness and you'd want to get TB and then run out of food. And then you have those booze as support. But you always want to grab at least two double eats, okay? For scenarios where you're 20 HP, double eat, double eat. You know what I'm saying? Or let's say that you're getting hit a lot of damage and you're not giving any damage in return. Let's say this guy is fighting me. You want to fight him back and brew as you're bolting him. Doesn't matter if your stats are low. Get that extra damage in. Does that make sense? So let's say that you guys are both frozen and this guy just hit you like a 60 total. You have 50 HP. Don't just eat the whole time and not click him. You want to hit him as you're brewing. Brew, hit, brew, hit, brew, hit. Keep spamming him as you brew. So, because if he's going to eat, there's no damage being dealt to you. And when you're eating, you want to do damage at the same time. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be using F keys for the display that I'm about to show you guys. If someone was to use F keys, which would you recommend? Okay, I'll explain to that use as well. Why. So in, in, in pure, there's no really tank gear because you're one defense. So this is a pure LMS, right? So I'm going to barrage this guy right off the bat. I managed to splash there. Obviously, you're going to have bad RNG. I managed to splash again. That's terrible. And uh, I caught a freeze here, right? So now what am I going to do? If there was a tree in deep wilderness and you barrage somebody, they're frozen. You could utilize this against them. Watch. Bolt, right? Bolt. And then now they're going to be trying to, use, like, maybe trying to freeze you the whole time. He managed to catch a freeze for the first freeze, right? Which is unfortunate. He's dead. You know what I'm saying? So um, there, uh, my HP was a bit low, yes. But I saw KO potential and I decided to take it, right? Um, I'm not using F keys while displaying this, okay? Um, F keys, the F keys I would personally say would be F5 for spec, F3 for prayer, F4 for spellbook, F1 for inventory, and F2 for this man thing over here where it shows all your items. You understand? Um, those are the F keys I got used to, and I, be, I believe they're PEOC F keys. Okay, so let me let me display 
I wanted to show you guys tank gear, but I'll show you guys in a different clip on how good tank gear is. Because in pure, there's no such thing as really tank gear. You're one defense, even if you get black dehyde on, you're going to get hit almost every single hit. It's almost impossible to get hit zeros on peers, right? So now, look, he's using, he's, he's maging me, right? I'm trying to inter I'm trying to guess what move he's going to do next. As you can see, like, look, 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 I ate to 115 here. I'm going to bolt at the same time, and then I'm going to see what he's going to do, right? So I got to restore here because I just brewed. Every time you brew, you have to restore. So I'm going to try to go for a declaw here. Fakey the mage, and then another declaw. Interesting. Did he DC IRL or in game? I can't tell. Um, okay, so for this guy, right, usually what is somebody gonna do here? They're gonna go for a mage, right? But what if you switch it up and just go for range off the bat? You get a big range hit, and now they're probably gonna do protect range and you get a big mage. You see? So I got I just got two overheads off the bat. That's what I mean by unpredictability. Now you're just gonna go ahead, bolt, right? Take it the mage, go for the D-claw, bolt him here. Could possibly be dead here. I'm gonna go for the D skim. Fake you the mage and then go for a Baraga, right? So my HP is kind of low here, so he might go for spec. So I'm just going to double E and then use protect melee 105 here. And then I bolted him the same time. You seen that? He's probably going to switch to protect melee here, but then he's going to go protect range on his own. If I just DD and don't do anything, let's see. There it is. And then I get a free D claw. Then he goes back. Could to you explain um, what the point of the DD is? So uh, when you freeze somebody, right, chap? For instance, notice that I keep trying to get, catch a freeze on this guy. Um, it puts you in an advantage, advantage position. You understand? So it puts you in a position where you are doing more damage than your opponent. Let me explain why. So right now, he's about to mage me, right? So I'm going to DD under him after this last hit. Now, he doesn't know what I'm going to do next. So I'm going to bolt again. See? So I, he's frozen, and he doesn't know what I'm doing. So I hit him, and then I walk under hit him and then i walk under and sometimes you get a lot of free hits depending how bad or how good somebody is even when somebody's really good they can miss hits right so when you freeze you want to try to utilize a dd as much as possible okay ddng is called death dotting which means freezing your opponent going under them and then doing random styles of hits on them for instance melee range mage back-to-back -back mage hits another mage hit three mage hits in a row they can't really anticipate what you're going to do so they're going to start guessing and that's very good for you because it will put you at advantage position. Does that make sense? When would you, at what threshold of HP, would you double eat? And when would you triple eat? Okay. I'm a risk fighter, right? I feel like I know when somebody's going to go for KO potential. And I've been risk fighting for years, okay? Okay, this guy's about to mage me, even though he just ranged me. So I'm going to go to mage. So I'm, I'm just going to guess here and just use protect range. I kind of did it late. Protect mage, see? And then I go back to protect range. See how I'm just like trying to predict him? Does that make sense? So I'm going to just... Sense. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to predict my opponent. See, if I had F keys here, most of these overheads would be exactly on prayer. So now I'm going to try to melee him and he could be dead here. Beautiful. See, that, that these are this is all without F keys. This is me being at my worst and I'm still killing these opponents. You got... If you learn the basics, you'll become a great PKer. Do you understand me, chat? I'm not being fast at all. If you guys think I'm fast right now, this is literally half of it. And I'm trying to show you guys that an aging is very basic once you learn it. So I'm going to mage this guy, right? This guy is going to probably range me right after his mage. Who wouldn't try to mage? See, he's ranging me. So I'm going to double eat here. That's very low HP. When you're in an H, you always want to camp. I don't care what there. Okay, let me specify this three times. I'm flashing. There is no safing. There is no safing. There is no safing in an H. You could be at any HP as you want and don't be ashamed at what HP you're at. Do you understand? So you want to keep your HP high at all times. The LMS is a bad, uh, I guess, scenario to show you guys um, when you guys should brew because you only get one brew and I already wasted it. But your HP wants to be high at all times. Preferably 115. Do you understand me? 99. If somebody bolts you a 40, get that HP a brew, bolt, brew, bolt. Definitely in pure NH as well. When you're on a pure, you want to do as much damage as possible because you're one defense, right? And if you're one defense, each hit is going to do so much damage. So I'm just going to Blood Baraga this guy, right? That gives me more HP. Notice that I'm using this house. Look, I bolt him and I keep my HP high. I'm going to eat again. He's going to try to mage me here. I have Protect Mage on. I have Mage, right? He's, he's going to declaw me. I'm going to try to mage him here. Do I catch it? I don't. He's going to Ballista me. I'm going to let him hit it because he can't at 51, right? So now I'm going to go behind this house. And I'm going to gain all my HP back before fighting back. 
see how you could toy with him as much as you want. So now I'm just going to go for a bolt. See how I, I had mage out, but I just go for a bolt. Another bolt, and he's probably going to ballista me here because he saw the protect mage. Most likely a ballista is going to come out now. And uh, that's an easy kill. You know what I'm saying? Um, wait, that was it? That was everybody? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Voila, from how much commentary I just did, I didn't know I won that. Voila.